we're going to talk about the things that were important to you, which is sustainability, clean label, food waste, plant forward, non-GMO, appealing to millennials, and then to Kathy's readers, there were again increased produce usage, sustainability, and clean label. So everything that we're going to talk about, I mean, I mean all of those items are going to be in this presentation. So that said, what we want to discuss is first of all, what just, you know, mushrooms sometimes are the kind of forgotten, um, you know, forgotten produce. Um, and I'm not even sure that, it, well, we know they don't, you know, they're not really produce, but, you know, as produce is having its day, we'll qualify them as produce. <laughs> but they are its own kingdom, really, when you think about that. So mushrooms live on their own. But we're going to talk about the power of mushrooms. We're going to talk about going to the next level with the blend. And if you haven't heard, has everybody heard the, you know, I mean, do you all know what the blend is all about? And, you know, Kathy talked about it, blending mushrooms with meat. Um, to reduce poor, you know, for a lot of different reasons. We're going to talk about the James Beard Foundation's Blended Burger Project and how that's an opportunity for all of you. And then, you know, I wanted to showcase some of the winning blend recipes that you all created. Okay, with that said, starting with mushrooms. So mushrooms, um, really, again, you know, like I said, you don't, you don't think about them sometimes, but there have been 3,000 articles about mushrooms, writ uh, written about mushrooms as a superfood in the last five or six years. Um, Time Magazine, as you see, men, you know, named it as one of the 13th healthiest foods of all time. Um, and that's because there's been so much new research that's come out about mushrooms and what mushrooms have in them. Um, and I think I have a slide there, but you know, it's everything from all the B vitamins to vitamin D to potassium to selenium to um, um, what am I? In fact, in vitamin D, it's the only um, produce item with naturally occurring vitamin D and one of the few items in the grocery store with naturally occurring okay. vitamin D. So there's all these antioxidants and all these anti-immunities. Um, you know, mushrooms have been seen as playing a role in breast cancer. Um, we can't really promote that, but if you were in the UK, you would actually say that mushrooms could do that. Um, but there's some work that's gone on in prostate cancer and breast cancer around that. So mushrooms are really, you know, there have been a lot of articles, as I said, written about them, um, you know, about mushrooms from a nutritional standpoint. Mushrooms are having their day, you know, right now. Um, in fact, there was just an article that was in the Packer, right? Um, today? Was that today, Bart? Um, today in the Packer that basically said that berries and mushrooms are um, probably the two top growing items in the produce category. Organic. Organic, okay, sorry. But if you look at the entire <laughs> produce category, and I know that you can't necessarily see, the, you know, you see the growth of total produce over the last, and this was done about a month ago, um, the growth of total produce and the growth of mushrooms. So we're outpacing, we're double, at least doubling the produce category right now. So indeed, mushrooms are having their day. Um, look at USDA, which monitors all, you know, all the, um, the commodities and all produce. And you see that really over the last couple, three decades, I think it's like three decades, um, mushrooms have had a, almost 1,000% a growth. Um, we're still really a small industry. Um, about $1.4 billion. Um, so they're brands that are bigger than the entire mushroom world, right? But still, um, almost a thousand percent growth. I figured I'd do a little quiz. So a thousand, um, there are three other items that have been growing faster than mushrooms in the produce category. Anybody want to guess or you want me to just go through those? Okay, berries, Brussels sprouts. Kale. 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 Okay, well, the first one is limes, okay? So somebody's got to be from Texas and got to think of, you know, margaritas and, um, and guacamole, right? And if you think of guacamole, then you'd go Avocado. avocados, right? And then the last one is, and the only real produce, well, I guess avocados is a produce, right? I, I mean a vegetable, a vegetable that tastes like a fruit. Um, or it's a fruit that acts like a vegetable, excuse me. Um, and so broccoli is up there as well. So we hear a lot about cauliflower. There's so much innovation going on in cauliflower. Not up there, you know, I'm not dissing cauliflower because it's really cool stuff um, in that case. But those are the top four growing um, items that have grown. Um, okay, so that was just kind of a, just a quick look at mushrooms, but the opportunities with the blend. 
So we worked with the Culinary Institute of America um, and a number of chefs through a, a collaboration called the Healthy Menus Collaborative, which included chefs from you know places like McDonald's and uh, all the all, most of the fast food chains, um, also some food management companies. Um, um, Fast Casual, Panera sat on there, Cheesecake Factory sits on there, all the rest of that. And we decided, you know, we, we looked at items. We, we were looking at, say, you know, four different, four different areas. And one was strategic calorie design, because we knew calories were coming on the menu for restaurant chains. Um, and then we looked at lower sodium, and we looked at how to get more produce on the plate. And one of the things that they started to look at first was, what do we do with burgers, right? There are about 12 billion burgers sold in this country away from home. So whereas Kathy showed some unbelievably cool things, <coughs> you know, burgers are just an iconic food that are a part of almost every menu. So could we do better? And that's what that group wanted to look at. Well, we basically looked at the umami and mushrooms, uh, again, something else that Kathy talked about, um, and the umami in beef, and it turned out, somebody told me, you know, I mean, I say that there's a symbiotic relationship between beef and mushrooms. Somebody said, yeah, it's really synergistic, but, you know, I'm not splitting hairs. The bottom line is beef and mushrooms go really well together, and you all as chefs have known that because <laughs> mushrooms are the number one topper on steaks, you know, mushrooms are the number one. If you, if you get rid of the other condiments like um, tomato, lettuce, and onion, mushrooms are the number one vegetable topper on burgers. They're the number one topper on chicken. You know, so you've always known that there's been this relationship between meat and mushrooms. What this group did was put mushrooms, and you see that picture on the upper, your upper right, and ground mushrooms and ground meat look, act, taste, perform, or mushrooms, ground mushrooms look, act, taste, perform almost like ground beef. So, you know, so then we realized, okay, is there an opportunity to put meat and mushrooms together and, you know, and really get something that is more flavorful, more sustainable, um, and more nutritious. So here's something from Fast Company that really just kind of encapsulizes everything that the blend is all about. And you see what they say. They talk about the flavor. So mushrooms are a flavor carrier and they also soak up flavor. Um, so many people who take a look, at, you know, who eat this, um, will say that it tastes beefier than a 100% beef burger. Um, and that's because the mushrooms have amplified the flavor of beef. And they cook, they add moisture, which if you're holding it all or want to just want a juicy burger, um, the mushrooms help. And then they make the patty taste better, better nutritional benefits, um, because there are no calories in mushroom, and there's uh, very few calories, excuse me, and no saturated fat and no fat. So, um, you know, all of a sudden you've taken all of that out of a burger. Um, and you've lowered the carbon footprint, which we're going to talk about in a second. So just in terms of calories, and this, that came from Yale, um, the first thing that they did. But again, if you think about 12, you know, and, and you see what they did, they, you know, they, they, they took a meatloaf and then all they did was change the, you know, all of the, they kept the same formula, the same recipe rather, and all they did was change out and put in 30% mushrooms, 35% mushrooms, and that's the kind of numbers that they were getting. Um, they also got increased satisfaction ratings at the same time, but if you think about that, 12 billion burgers, um, and if, if we would take every burger in food service and convert those to um, a blended burger, then we would save 1.5 trillion calories, and that's something like, somebody could do the math, but it's something like every adult in this country um, fasting for about five to six days. So that's how many calories that really is. And they can still get the burger that they want. Right, you know, and the indulgence that they want. So, um, from a people standpoint, that's a big deal. From a planet standpoint, mushrooms are one of the most sustainable products, um, um, the most sustainable foods produced in the United States. Mushrooms also, I told you, a small industry. One of the biggest recycle. I mean, we are the biggest recycler of agricultural waste in this country as well. In terms of, um, well, that didn't. I, I thought I had another slide here. Let me see if I do. Nope, I don't. So let me just tell you real quick, but on an acre of land, I'm not going to tell you about uh, you know, what, what happens with beef. Well, let's start with water because we're out here in California. But in terms of water, you, know, you can go up and look um, up how much water it takes to produce a pound of beef. 
Um, it takes 1.8 gallons of water to produce a pound of mushrooms. That's probably one of the lowest things of all plants or vegetables. Um, on an acre of land, you can grow, well this I think I can, you, you know, on an acre of land you can grow about a thousand pounds of beef. On an acre of land you, grow, you can grow a million pounds of mushrooms. So the carbon footprint is substantially lower. So, you know, um, again, I don't mean to say that to, um, you know, at, at all because we're partners with beef, right? And partners with the meat industry. In fact, that's what this is all about. This is not about, this is about, and I should have said this earlier, this is about being plant forward, right? Not plant based. Um, plant based, we can also fill that too with, with portobellas and things like that. Mushrooms have always been the meat and meatless. But this is about people who are trying to be flexitarian, who are trying to reduce their consumption of red meat, and this is a way to get that done. And from a sustainability standpoint, you know, that really is a major, um, a major opportunity. So, um, World Resources Institute, um, who work with Panera, Sodexo, Hilton, Stanford, a few others, um, and through their Better Buying Lab, um, they basically have said, so we didn't say this, but it's a pretty cool if they're, if, you know, I mean, it's kind of a cool thing that the blended burgers is, is a sustainability strategy that could sit alongside renewable energy, energy efficiency, water efficiency, and waste reduction. So that's like kind of cool. What they said over here is that if we, and they said 10 billion burgers, but they said if we converted 10, you know, every one of the 10 billion burgers, it would be akin to taking 2.3 million cars off the road. That would be like everybody in San Diego not driving. Um, it would save, um, you can see the, con uh, you know, conserve water, 2.6 million um, Americans, as much water as 2.6 million Americans use at home. And it would save agricultural resources about the size of either Belgium, since they're from the UK, or the state of Maryland if you think about that. So, you know, that's just by blending mushrooms in with meat. That's not putting them on top and all the rest of that. Um, taste tests. So, you know, you're gonna be able to sample some things here, but um, we have, want, you know, we, we've done considerable research. So has UC Davis, so has CIA, so has Yale, so has Washington State. And every time we, you know, the blended burger has won taste tests. Um, so, uh, you know, you'll see some of that right there. Weight Watchers called um, um, that. That is a blended burger that they featured on their menu. I I'm sorry, on their cover and said best burger ever. Um, here, so you can't read all this, but this is basically the most recent uh, study that was a sensory study that was run by a group called Brand IQ. And basically the blend um, went up against one of those plant-based burgers. Um, and, as well as a traditional all beef burger. And you can see where the blend, the blend outscored the others. Appearance, eating experience, savory flavor, texture, salting, the level of salt. Um, and the level of salt, by the way, you saw that with the Yale thing. Um, the reason that salt was lower is because mushrooms, as I said, were, uh, you know, they are a flavor carrier. So everybody who makes a blended burger, not everybody, you all probably didn't do this, but if you make a blended burger, most people will oversalt it because they'll salt it the, exactly the way they would salt their traditional burger, and you don't need that much salt. So, you know, so you've got a reduction of sodium just from the salt that you've added into, you know, into that, um, into that dish. So then I wanted to show you something because mushrooms are polarizing, right? Is that would we would we say that's true? Have you found that out? Um, so I wanted to tell you where people, I've also told you that mushrooms are one of the top growth items in the produce counter. So we're debunking that whole idea that mushrooms are polarizing. But still, you have people who say, okay, well, yeah, there's some of that. So what we did in that same research study is we showed, you know, the, the first thing that we did before everybody tasted it, we showed them the burger and then we asked them, which one would you, which one would you likely order? And 44% of the people picked the blended burger, probably just by sight, probably because it looked juicier, more than likely, that's probably the one thing, they all look the same, you know, they're all brown and right. whatever. Um, there wasn't any difference from that standpoint. But 44% said the blended burger. Then, from a purchase intent standpoint, after they tasted it, that number jumped up to 62%. Then we actually told them that there were mushrooms blended into that. 
and here comes the polarizing part, right? You know, it's like, okay, mushrooms in my burger, right? You know, I'm not going to eat that. Well, it actually rose. It increased. You know, when they knew that mushrooms were in their burgers, it went up, it went up to a couple percentage points, but nonetheless, it went up. So, and then interestingly, the same study showed that, okay, when, when asked, well, okay, so you got this blended burger, what would that, you know, be subbed for, right? And so, of course, they'd say beef burgers, you know, 70-something percent said beef burgers, veggie burgers, I don't know why they said veggie burgers, because this is not a vegetarian option, this is a plant-forward, not plant-based, right? But anyway, they did say that. Um, but Again, I think that goes back to Kathy's point. Veggie burgers, sure, people are eating veggie burgers, but they're not necessarily vegetarian. Uh, you know, they're not vegans, and they may not be vegetarians. They just may want to reduce their reliance on red meat. Turkey burgers, um, okay. But then look at the last two. That's really the point that I wanted to make. Forty, you know, more than forty percent said that this could replace a chicken dish, um, a chicken sandwich or a chicken dish, and it's like you all as chefs. You know, and you probably do great stuff with chicken, but, you know, we have chickenized America, right? You know, and there are some people that say, if I, if I have to eat one more chicken dish, you know, uh, but we have. Chicken, chicken has been great, right? You know, and it's over, it's past beef in terms of the number of, you know, servings. Um, but this basically said, these people said, yeah, I actually don't have, you know, one day a week, I can eat, I can actually go back and eat my beef or my burger instead of chicken. So we thought that was pretty cool. So who's doing it, right? Um, you know, Kathy said that it was on trend. You know, it's been written up as being on trend for the last four or five years. Um, this year, Whole Foods called it, you know, um, you know one, of, one of their major top, their top five trends. Huffington Post this year did so. Um, but, so we wanted to give you just a range of, and these were really the early adopters, but a lot of these people here, the only burger you can get, especially the colleges, the only burger that you can get on campus at Ohio State, at Illinois, at Yale, at USC, at um, Colorado, who am I missing, Virginia, Princeton, um, UMass, the only burger that you can get is a blended burger. There are no 100% beef burgers, and that's all about sustainability. So. Um, you see Google up there, Pinterest, Twitter, so we got all those Silicon Valley guys. Um, and now, so the other colleges up there are just starting right now. And so, like at Michigan State, the blended burger is rolling out. Um, University of Michigan is starting to play with it. Virginia just got themselves a commercialized product and they're doing it. Yukon, again, was one that's only burger you can get. So, you know, so those are, um, you know, some pretty cool things. I have to tell you, I put in University of Alaska there. Um, University of Alaska blends mushrooms with reindeer. Wow. So I don't know if reindeer is sustainable or not, but <laughs> whatever. Yeah, maybe up there. And then I guess I wanted to point to the top thing too. Sodexo switches to blended burgers. So Sodexo, um, that article is really about switching to blended burgers in K through 12. So I'll go back to polarizing. I'll go back to kids don't eat veg. You know, kids don't eat vegetables, right? And kids for sure don't eat mushrooms. And Sodexo now, in every one of the 350 K through 12 districts, serves only a blended burger. I work with Sodexo in healthcare, and they're trying to make. So you're getting burgers rolled out, right? You know? Yeah. Well, did you see the mindful burger? I mean, in the mindful program, it rolled out. Well, now you all. And Sodexo's cool because Sodexo actually is created with their meat processor, a chub that already comes made with yeah, mushrooms nice, blended nice, into nice, it. Nice. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, and I, my understanding is it's even showing up on patient menus, which is really, really oh, tough right. to do. Yeah, right. So where, where are you from? Uh, Amarillo, Texas. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, so that's being rolled out all throughout Sodexo, so thank you very much. Um, performance. So I told you all about the nutrition aspects, right? Um, the biggest thing that's happened to us recently is um, the fact that, uh, um, you know, that there are, that, that mushrooms and, and, the, and the blend is, is, being, is showing up on training tables throughout the country because of those very things, right? You know, you don't get sick on game day with the anti-immunities. You know, the antioxidants keep you, you know, keep you healthy. There's recovery properties into that. Minnesota Twins, which is up there, which I'll start on that side, 
they serve in their academy, which is all the double A, triple A, you know, whatever else, all the minor leaguers, right? They don't serve beef anywhere in, you know, they serve chicken, they'll serve seafood, but they wouldn't serve beef. And you, you know, you gotta think, that, I mean, these are, these are kids, and I do mean kids because some of those kids are not even, you know, I mean, they quit high school and they're playing ball, right? Or, so the average age is maybe 18 or whatever else, and you know they want, you know, as soon as they're out of there, they wanna, yeah, they wanna go to their fast food place and get a burger. So now Minnesota Twins, after they found out about the blend, now serves at their academy. They serve blended burgers. USC, um, Kathy talked about, um, um, shakshuka, right? So their shakshuka has beef and mushrooms blended into it. So do their tacos. Um, and they do some burgers with that. Then you see TCU is part, and, and Gonzaga, Gonzaga is part of Sodexo. Sodexo is because they have the blended burger, they are rolling it out to every one of their colleges and the training tables on their college. So it's part of their circuit training menu. Um, chains. I'll leave Sonic to last. I don't know if anybody of you have seen, you know, seen that, um, but um, you know, it started out with Cheesecake Factory, and then, in fact, I think that's, yeah, there it is, season 52. Um, Hilton now is rolling out blended burgers. Omni is doing blended burgers. Fleming's is doing um, them as well, Firebird's Grill. But the biggest one, of course, is Sonic. So Sonic um, over, really, I, I guess it started in April or May. Um, rolled out, you know, this is the first fast food chain, um, fit, you know, one of the top five. Are they doing it for all of their burgers or is it an option? Just, oh, it's, it was just an LTO. Okay. It was just an LTO. It was called the Sonic Slinger. Cool. And, um, you know, what they did was it was, if you took a look at the calorie count, the calorie count, I, I'm not picking on chicken again, but I, I will. Um, no, I mean, not intentionally, because we go great with chicken burgers too. Um, Anyway, um, you know, if you looked at the calorie count on their slinger, it was less than their grilled chicken sandwich. Huh. So that was kind of cool for them, right? Um, and so now it's still back. If you, if you all are close to a Sonic, you know, you, it won't be advertised as the slinger. It'll be advertised as a car hop classic special. So it's a bundled meal right now. So it was so successful, they brought it back. Um, will it become part, you know, I, I don't think at Sonic it'll ever become all of their, you know, but will it replace a few things? Will it maybe come on the kids' menu? You know, I mean, there's a lot of really cool places for it to happen, but yeah, I, I don't see it as something that would replace all of their burgers. But, you know, Sonic, again, as I said, fourth or fifth largest burger chain in this country. Um, and who would have thought where Sonic is located that mushrooms would have been, you know, a big part of what they're doing. Um, and their CEO, by the way, became, you know, he was named as the menu innovator. Um, he had the best LTO of the year. He was, he was named one of the top food, top 50 food influencers um, by Nation's Restaurant News. Um, you know, he was just recently on CNBC where he talked about how the Slinger and a couple other things really turned their entire business around in May and a yeah, April, May, well, May and June, excuse me. So you can look that, you know, you can take a look at that. You know, pretty cool stuff from that standpoint. It's a coincidence that the stock is selling for $24 and for a pan in the last 30 years. Huh. Treasure. <laughs> yes, right. And if it's not, I want some of that money. <laughs> um, again, you can just see some of the other things that, um, you know, that have been written about. Um, you know, so consumers are starting to, you know, I mean, they clearly, clearly, you know, are seeing this happen. Um, Forbes named us the, you know, last year, that was the number one foodie buzzword from Forbes was blended burger, right? Um, and then most recently, well, there's a Sonic one, um, but, oh no, this isn't most recently. You can just see some of those um, other articles, but this is most recently, within, within the last like three weeks, um, you know, Consumer Reports, you know, wrote about blended burgers. So we would never have thought that they would have done that. Time Magazine talked about mushrooms get their moment. Remember that headline? Because there's a Wall Street Journal article from two years ago that says mushrooms have their moment, huh. right? So, you know, like I said, we've been, you know, and that's not just about the blend at time, in Time Magazine. It's about mushrooms in general. And then finally, you know, the blended burger could replace the classic American burger. So. What I wanted to do is talk to you about this opportunity. 
what we do, we are in the fifth, let me see what I've got. So we, this will be in, 20, in May of 2019, it'll be the fifth year of the, of the James Beard Foundation Blended Burger Project. James Beard and, you know, um, have, has always, everybody knows them in terms of culinary craft, right? But they're also, they're really, they really want to build and they care about sustainability, right? So they have these impact programs that they've been talking to chefs and their own chefs about how you can be more sustainable. But they never really actually had a way to activate against that until they found out blend, you know, about blended burgers. And they realized that there's a major sustainability opportunity here. So the James Beard Foundation and we, um, it's really J James Beard Foundation's program, um, has created the Blended Burger Project. As I said, fifth year. Um, as you can see, you know, they talk about, you know, when you menu the blend, you can really actually make a difference based on all the things that I said. If you go to their website right now, they still have that up. It's up all the time. Um, you'll see the 2018 winners. Somebody said they were from Albuquerque. Yeah, so um, I think it was Toltec Brewing. Yeah, won, the, um, won this year. Um, so uh, they're one of the five. Oh, it is, it's right up there, Toltec Brewing, right from Albuquerque, so there you go. Um, in fact, in the top 20, there was another restaurant, I can't remember who it was. But if you go on Blended Burger Project, um, search that or search James Beard and look under the impact programs, you'll see all the reasons that James Beard says, you know, pretty much what I said here, but why you should menu a blended burger. So what does that all mean? And then you see Stephanie Izard, you know, from Girl and the Goat. Um, she has a blended burger. She, she was the spokesperson this year. She still has the blended burger on her menu um, and she's going to keep it there. There's a video on YouTube that says she believes that it's better than any other burger that she's ever menued, which is cool coming from Stephanie. Um, you know, the, the opportunity is what James Beard has tried to do is, dem you know, it's kind of, so there are like 4,000 members of James Beard. You know, I, I mean, some of you are chefs that own your own restaurants. Some of you are also sh chefs that call on other people, right, or work with distributors. Um, you know, the, the, kinda, the, the question I have is, and it's not really a question, it's a rhetorical question, but how often do you have a chance to engage with James Beard or work with other chefs that engage with James Beard? And, you know, you, you can talk about why that is and, you know, why, you know is, is it just a little political and whatever else, but the bottom line is, yeah, you don't get that, that chance very often. With Blended Burger Project, they really have, have realized that and they want to reach people um, and chefs that are not part of the 4,000 chefs that are members of James Beard. So when you join the Blended Burger Project, which again will start on Memorial Day in 2019, what will happen is you will get all kinds of materials that you can post in your restaurant, um, you know, if you menu a blended burger. Um, and then you get, you know, you get photos put on the gallery, you know, on the gallery at James Beard. It is an opportunity for you as chefs to engage with them. You I'm register with them? Yeah, you register with them, you send them a picture of your burger. Um, I thought I had their website. Yeah, I don't have their website. But you can see it and, you, and you'll be able to go see, there are about 450 restaurants from last year that menu, and, and again, you'll look at it and you'll see Top Chefs and Iron Chefs, but you'll see luxury hotels and you'll see Hilton Garden Inns and you'll see food trucks and you'll see independent restaurants and you'll see a pizza place and whatever else. It's really, again, their opportunity, you know, I mean, a restaurant's opportunity to say, hey, you know, somebody, somebody is looking at <coughs> our food and our food is pretty darn good because James Beard has recognized that in some sort of way. So we think that, you know, that is a big opportunity and we're going to encourage you. I'm going to also ask you a question when we're done with this too about how we actually work with you, especially um, the chefs that are with distributors right now. But you see some of the, um, some of the past winners, you Atchison, who was also a top chef, was a spokesperson one year, see some of the burgers. So some of those burgers are Instagram worthy, right? You know, whatever that thing is on the <laughs> bottom, I don't know what that is, but it won. That was from South Texas somewhere. Um, and you know what? Other people have gotten behind this too. So what this does besides, uh, I say other people, the first thing I'd say is a lot of the things on this slide are what chefs have done to merchandise themselves. So once you've entered the Blended Burger Project, you know, this is a way to bring people into your restaurants, right? You know, and to, you know, fill those seats. 
Um, so there's been a lot of merchandising. In fact, for, for the most part, this is not a recipe contest. It's, a, it's more of a merchandising. It's how many votes you get, and then the way that works is we took the top 20 vote getters, and then you know, we, had a, you know, we had a group of judges, including Andrew Zimmern, and then Susan Westmoreland from Good Housekeeping Magazine, who picked the 20 winners. Um, you know, I'm sorry, who took, looked at the 20 winners and picked the five from there. Um, so you'll see, you know, a lot of those are things that the chefs have done themselves. You'll see a bunch of YouTube videos from independent chefs. That's to promote themselves, right? So we're giving you, you know, we hope that James Beard is giving you a promotional platform for you to build your business. And then, you know, other people, and I said people have jumped in on this. Culinary Fight Club is a big part of it. That up in the upper left, um, in three weeks, Star Chefs is going to have three, four weeks. Um, Star Chefs is having a blended burger battle on the stage of their, um, their annual Congress. Um, Blue Apron just recently did a promotion around blended burgers and sent them to, you know, and had that recipe for consumers. Chef did two years ago. Um, so, you know, again, just expanding. So there's mushrooms are having a moment from two years prior. So Time Magazine looked at that. But, you know, there's so much information. And again, you see, I put that up there because it's something like, I can't see what it says. But if you, if you search blended burger, it's like millions and millions of references that come up um, for that. 1.3. So maybe not millions and millions. But 1.3 references on, you know, just on blended burger um, project or blended burger. So wanted you to see that. Um, and so then just overall, the opportunity for you all, as we said, number one, especially, you know, I kind of wrote this for the, the chefs that are working for, if, I mean, if you're a chef and you work, um, and by the way, what I didn't say was one of the winners this year came from um, Restaurant Associates, so a Sodexo, so it doesn't matter, you know, um, um, Sodexo, you know, I mean, no matter who you're talking to and whatever else, again, when I say it's it's you know democratized. Yeah, there there were there were, I don't I don't know if there were some Sodexo. Sh you know, I'm not, I'd have to go back and look. Some of them I don't even know. You know, if a college joined, so didn't know. But in that case, it was a food service management company that actually won, right? You know, that did a corporate dining you know operation. But you know, for the chefs that are calling on other chefs. Well, and, and chefs that have, you know, you all that have your own restaurant, this is an opportunity to showcase, this is a menu solution, right? This is a way to make food better, to make food more sustainable, and to, to make food taste be um, as better, more, better nutritionally, and taste better. So it, and it works with more than just blended burgers, um, which I'll talk about in just a second. Um, you can show consumers that, you know, that, that, that you're doing better for them, you care about them, and, uh, and they can eat better while they still get what they want, right? Um, you know, it's a, it's an, it's a, a promotional platform that you can drive people into the business, uh, you know, into your business. Um, and, you know, you may never have, um, or the chefs that you work with may never have a, you know, a James Beard opportunity on their own, and this is it. So, and then you can use the blend because it really talks, uh, you know, I mean, it's James Beard, so it covers, every, you know, everything on your menu for the most part and why you're, so, why you're good at what you do. So when I said it's blend and more, this is, Kathy, thank you very much, um, this, this month's issue of Flavor in the Menu talks about a restaurant in Atlanta that is not just doing blended burgers, but is using the blend for lasagna in this case. But you can use it for tacos and meatballs and all kinds of other things. So this is one who, you know, a, a restaurant which has taken the blended burger and just said everything about, you know, ground meat is, you know, will be the blend. Um, Stanford does that too. They don't even talk about the blend anymore. They just talk about their meat dishes. Every one of their meat dishes is blended with you know, 30 or 40 percent mushrooms. And there are others like that as well. Okay, so with that, you know, there were, I don't know, where's Ka Kathy? I don't see. Kathy, have we talked to any of you, let anybody know? No, this is 
Oh, so, wait, so I'm doing this? You should be doing, okay. Anyway, so, you know, we appreciate all of you who um, sent in a blended, and normally what we do is we would have given you this presentation and then asked you to go back and develop some things and whatever else, but you all being great chaps, right? You know, we just went, you know, went ahead and did it, so we appreciate that. So what we did was, um, or, you know, the three, so the three, Winner. I mean, the three, okay, the three finalists, and there's going to be a judging. We're going to eat, we're going to eat um, all three of these, um, so they're being prepared right now, and then there's, you know, whatever, and then Kathy and Kat, I don't know who had Tim, whatever, there'll be a judging panel, and they're going to award first, second, and third, and then there's also a, um, a people's choice, right? Um, so anyway, so the three winners were this. Um, blended turkey meatball, as you see. I don't know who did that. Yeah, is that you? Okay. All right. Oh, so did you use the meat chub with that, too? Uh, then the jalapeno mushroom patty melt. Okay, that's great. And then the mighty mushroom burger with bacon jam and a fried egg. So, you know, who was that? Okay, way to go. So those would be the three, but there was there were th th there were some other really great ones. The, the one with oyster, and, uh, you know, and whatever that was, and oyster mushrooms. I mean, when you think about that, crab cake and oyster mushrooms put together to be, to do surf, uh, you know, to do surf and surf, you know, it's probably a really pretty cool idea. Um, so anyway, there were a lot of really great ones, but that was it. So um, that's really all I have. Um, and you know we want you know so so except for the fact that what I'd ask you to you know I what we'd like to do is for sure if you're a chef that that you know that has a restaurant um, or um, works in healthcare or whatever else we encourage you to join the Blender Burger Project for the reasons that I talked about if you're a chef that is working with you know other um, you know with people who work with other operators what we want to do is find a way to work with you to see if we can't get a winner from you know from the Marcon group right you know um, and maybe we've had one and didn't know about it but you know this is a great way remember this is a burger platform and what could be wrong with the burger number one but it's a great platform you know I mean Stephanie Izard's burger which is still on the menu uh, I mean, what I was going to say is it's a great way to sell more produce, too, on top of it. So Stephanie's Burger has, a, has um, an olive asparagus tapenade on it, and then beneath it, it has a rhubarb mustarda. Um, plus, it has shiitake mushrooms blended in. So, yeah, there you go. You know, I mean, there's just, you know, there's so many different ways. And if you look at, like, even any, anyone on the, gal you know, on the gallery, there's just so much great produce. So what we'd love to do is find a way to get, you know, some of, some of you all. And we'd work with you all individually, too. You know, if you work with the distributor, you know, mm -hmm. I'd love to know your ideas. You know, I'll leave some cards here. But your ideas for how can we work with you to pick your own um, winner amongst, you know, whatever distribution house you work with, right? You know, I mean, if you get five people who do that, you know, we could, you know, do we give cash awards to, you know, the five best, you know, that you decide, you know, whatever. So we are open to all that. We want to do that. Um, you know, we are hoping, um, and not just because we're the mushroom, we, you know, obviously we're the mushroom, con mushroom council and it's self-serving, but on the other hand, hopefully you believe you know, some of the things that we've talked about and what it really does, you know, in terms of nutrition and sustainability. So we want to reach as many people as we can. So we'd love to engage you. We'd love to figure out how we can work together. Um, and I thank you very much for your time.